Hey, good morning, everybody. You know, I just like the 8.30 crowd. You get up, you get it out of the way, then you do your thing. Yeah, so yeah, it's great to see you. Welcome to Foundations, everybody. Really glad you're here. As Matt just said on the video announcements, if you're new here, we, we have a lot going on this fall. I can't even keep up with it. So outside, on the, on the way out, there's a connection tent that says everything that's going on. It's the way we can get to know you. It's the way you get to know us. So if you want to plug in, uh, that's a great way to do it right now is just get involved in the connection tent. It's good to be back. I was away visiting my brother last week in Cleveland. Go Cleveland Browns. And, um, and um, so I, I got so many people. I was overwhelmed by the texts that I got. I, I realize too many people have my cell phone number, uh, but, um, but thank you for the outpouring of support. There's just so much support, and so thank you for, for all that. I had a fa fabulous visit. I had other family members with me, and we visited my brother, so it was a great visit, but it was a sad, hard visit because I don't think he has much time at all, so it's hard to watch my parents, my mom pass away, I watched my dad pass away, and watching a brother pass away, ooh, that puts things at a whole new level for me. So. That was hard, but we, we had a really, really uh, good visit. I just wanted to say that because so many people were asking me. I just want to thank you for so much support and prayers. Our family just feels just blessed beyond belief, and you guys are so, so, so good, better than I deserve. So th thank you for that. So, and, and it's a great week to be here. We're starting a series for eight weeks. Okay, it's called Fast Track, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through the Bible in eight weeks. Okay, the whole thing. Okay, the whole thing, we're going to put a tic-tac-toe board. That's a tic-tac-toe board up there. And each week, we're going to give you nine figures. We're going to go fast. We're going to go through the Bible. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to plug in with us, okay? And if you're not here during the week, that's okay. I mean, during the weekends, we live stream. We have a lot of people, over 500 people join us each week live streaming. So hello to you people who are up in the mountains. Why don't you invite me? I'm upset with you. Uh, but um, just check in with us, okay? Uh, if you want to follow us on the way out, on the doors there, uh, there's a table there. It's called our fast track table. And I'm, I'd like you, I'd invite you to pick up one of these books. It's going to go through eight weeks. You could do it with your kids. It's real quick, and you will get a bird's eye view of the Bible. The Bible's hard, hard to understand. And we're going to try to make it so that you can make the Bible more understandable. So pick up these books. Now, they cost about 10 bucks. Okay, so if you have 10, that's great. If you don't, get a book. Okay, we're not checking. We're not checking. So if you say, I don't have it, I don't have it, I'm going to Sonic. Go to Sonic and get a book, okay? All right? But we want everybody to have a book, okay? I'm taking my family through. This is a great way for your kids to learn it. And there's a lot of memorable systems. So you won't remember all nine things. We're doing for, 80 week, for eight weeks. Nine times eight is what, 72? You'll have 72 symbols. But this stuff will come back to you very quickly, okay? So do that. We have a lot of life groups starting, okay? So And for the next eight weeks, life groups are starting all over the place. Every Every night, every day of the week. It's a way we're going through this in life groups. So if you want to do that, plug into a life group. If you want to get a book and, and, and we have DVDs that go along with the life group and say, you know what, I want to take my family through it. I want to take my neighbors through it. Because it's, it's, not, it's not slanted towards any denomination or any belief. It's just here's what the Bible just says. So if you have neighbors or whatever and, and, and you want to say, hey, I want, let's just look at the Bible, see what it has to say. This is a great way to do it, okay? So for eight weeks, we're just going to saturate this place with understanding at a 50,000-foot level what the Bible says, okay? So pick up one of these books. That would really, really be great. That will be a great help. I'm really, really glad you're here. And so um, if you're ready to get started, say, I'm ready. Okay, so let's do this. The first thing I want to put a picture up here. Okay, these are my glasses. I look good, don't I? Yeah. These are, these are my DVD glasses. Really, you guys look weird. Uh, so um, um, you can watch movies at DVD. I love 3D movies. I love 3D movies, okay? So the first step we do as we look into the Bible is we're going to do this. Every week, we're going to put our glasses on. Okay, so put them on right now. Just pretend. Okay, because here's why. This is the glasses that we're looking at. This is what Jesus said. John chapter 5. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, you search the Bible because you think they give you eternal life. But the Bible doesn't give you eternal life. The Bible points to Jesus. So every week, we're going to start right from the beginning today. We're going to put our glasses on because everything in the Bible points to Jesus. And if you don't look at the Bible through the lens of Jesus, you'll get screwed up. There are so many cults, 
So many churches that have bizarre and wacky beliefs, and it all comes from the Bible. But they misinterpreted it because they don't have their glasses on. Are you all with me today? Okay? So one thing we have to do is always look at the Bible through the lens of Jesus, because that's what Jesus says. The Bible wasn't written so you could find some magic formula in there to make your life work. The Bible was written because the Bible points to Jesus, and Jesus is the one who brings light and opens up the meaning of what the Bible is all about, okay? You'll see that a little bit today. You'll see that, okay? So I want you to see, first step, every time we open up the Bible, the first thing we do is put what on? Our glasses on and look for Jesus, Okay? There's always a promise in the Bible. A lot of times there's a short-term fulfillment, but there's an ultimate fulfillment that could always be found in Jesus. Okay? If you got that, say, I got it. Good. Second thing we want to do is this verse right here. Is this. This comes from Psalm chapter 1. This is why we're doing this. Eight weeks, long time. He says, people delight in the Bible. People who delight in the Bible, and they think about it day and night, they are like trees planted by the riverbank bearing fruit in each season. They're strong, they're stable, and their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. How many people like to prosper in life? Huh? That's not talking about how big your checking book is, how much money is in your account. I know a lot of people have a lot of money in their checking account. They're not prospering. The biblical word for prosper is a lot bigger than money. It means you're doing well. Physically and emotionally and relationship-wise, you're prospering. God says this, if you understand his word, you're like a tree planted by the river. So when the winds of adversity blow against us, we stand strong. We stand strong. And we have seasons where, where we bear fruit and our leaf never withers. Looks like your leaf is withering a little bit. Okay, your, your leaf never withers. And in everything you do, you... I'm just kidding. We're friends. I wouldn't do it if you were my friend. And everything we do, we prosper. Are you all with me? Okay? That's what happens when you understand the power of God's word. And one more thing we want while we're doing this, there's a lot of reasons, but there's another one. We want to avoid disasters. We want to avoid disasters in life. The word disaster comes from two words. Astro means star. Dis means without. When you have a disaster in your life, that means we're living without light in our life. You all with me? You're living without light. And so God's, by the, the, God's word gives us a perspective even when we can't find our way. That's why we're studying about it. We're trying to avoid disasters. We're trying to live with light. Here's what the Bible says in Psalm 119. It says this, your word, God, your Bible, your Bible is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Have you ever been lost? Huh? Ever been lost? Like, it's easy to get lost in your career. It's like, what am I doing? It's easy to get lost in marriage. It's like, wow, it just feels like we're just cohabitating. Well, it's easy to get lost if you have teenagers. Okay? How, how do you get perspective when the world is moving so fast? God's word says, hey, I, I'm going to be a lamp to your feet and a light to my path. Are you guys late to the 8.30 or early for the 9 o'clock? I'm just curious. Oh, you were greeting. You were serving. Okay, beautiful. Okay, that's beautiful. That's a, that's, she got off the hook on that one, didn't she? Huh? Good thinking. Okay? 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 So... <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I shouldn't do that, should I? That's just embarrassing. No one's coming in now. I'm not going in there. <laughs> so, so I need, I need. When I'm watching, when I'm watching my brother, and I see death in his face, and our family's around his bed in the living room. I need a lamp. I need a light. Are you all with me? Because God's word can do that for us. So here's our goal for the next eight weeks. We'll put it on the screen. Here's our goal. Our goal for all of us here is to move God from maybe being viable to reliable. Are you all with me? You may say, oh, well, maybe there's a God out there. There's, you know, planets and stuff. Maybe there's a God. Maybe, but I, I, Stephen Jobs 
When, when, when he was young, he was adopted, and he went to a Lutheran church with his parents. He didn't really like the Lutheran church too much, but he saw a Life magazine there. On the cover was a picture of some kids who were starving poverty. He took the picture and folded it in his pocket and went to see the pastor. He says, hey, pastor, does God know everything? And he goes, yes, he does. He says, if I put my fingers behind my back with some digits, will God know what digits they are? And the pastor goes, yes, he knows that. And Stephen Jobs pulled out the picture of these starving kids. He says, does God know about this? And the pastor goes, yes, he does. And Jobs says, well, that's good. Isn't that? Thank you for telling me because I don't trust a God like that. And he never gave, he turned his back on the church and faith and God for the rest of his life. He didn't think God was reliable. Are you all with me? Today, here's our goal in the next eight weeks, to move God from viable to reliable because he can be trusted, even in the details of our lives. So we want to move God from viable to reliable so that his presence in our life is undeniable. See, I've been working while I've been traveling. See, you didn't know that, huh? I'm working, okay? That's our goal, to move God from viable to reliable. And you do that by trusting him. You do it by trusting him. That's what we're doing for the next eight weeks. Let's all stand together. We have to ask God to help us because here's why. God's ways are mysterious, and if you try to understand God with your natural mind, we can't do it. God's too big. We need supernatural help. God's ways only come through God's help. And so when you try to do it in the natural, we can't do it. So we're going to ask God to help us in these next eight weeks to say, God, we want to understand you. We're here to seek you and to know you and to help us be a light to our path, to know that you're reliable even when life squeezes us. And the only way we could do it is God helps us. Join me in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for all these people here. It's amazing. It's amazing to see all these people get up on a Sunday morning. Thank you that they're here. You know why? You know why we're here, Father? We're here because we need you. That's why. A lot of things to do Sunday morning, but we're here because we need you. And I look outside, I look up to the mountains, and I say, oh, it's viable that there's a God. But Father, I need to move from viable and know that you're reliable. So today, teach us your ways. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may grab a seat. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. I, I shouldn't do this. In fact, next couple of weeks I'll have other people up here after last week, after yesterday. It was sad. I'm going to draw nine things. I can't draw. And I'm going to draw nine pictures today. Okay, we're going to take these nine pictures and we're going to put them on our tic tac toe board over there. Okay, someone says, Pastor, are you going to climb that ladder? You're getting up there and kind of, no, I'm not going to climb that. No, my son is. Okay, so he's going to, he's going to climb it. Okay, and we're going to draw nine pictures and we're going to go through the first two books of the Bible. The first book is called Genesis, that means beginning. And the second book of the Bible is called Exodus. That means exit. Let's get out of here, okay? So we're going to go through the beginning, and then we're going to get out of here and have a beautiful day today. Go Broncos, okay? All right? Okay, if you're ready to go, say, I am. Here's how the Bible starts, okay? Here's how the Bible starts. The Bible starts in the beginning. God created the earth. Now, every religion believes they're God created. The Bible has a different perspective on how God created. Other, Bible, other religions have their God created because he's angry, because he's jealous, because he's competing with other gods. Our God created, the God of the Bible created the heavens and the earth out of joy. He goes, it's good. I want to create things. It's good. And you read the first chapter of the Bible, and it says, God created, and it was good. It's like a song. And God created, and it was good. And God created, and it was good. And God created, and it was good. God did it because that's his nature to create things out of joy and out of love. That's how he created. And God says, this, everything's great. Wow, look at this. I created. It's awesome. And he did it because he wanted to, because he loved to do it. He loves to create. But then he says, I don't want my creation here not to be enjoyed by people. So he created created another person. That's Adam, okay? He created him. He says, Adam, I want to share my joy with you. I want to share my joy with you, Adam. So there it is. And he goes, but Adam, I don't want you to share my joy alone. So I'm going to create someone else. And so he created curly cues. Eve, okay? They created Eve. And so God says, and then he, when he says, his creation was good, this was good, this was good. And when he created man, Adam and Eve, he says they are very good. It's the pinnacle of God's creation, we're people. Are you all with me? 
The mountains are majestic. The ocean is unbelievable. But the pinnacle of God's creation are human beings. And it was all very, 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 very good. Okay, Lukey, come on, bud. That's my son, Luke. Give him a hand. Okay, he's helping us out. Okay. Yeah, go Broncos, Lukey. Okay, all right. Okay. And in this beautiful creation, God said, I want you to trust me. I want you to trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me, because I'm a good God. I'm a good God. Just trust me, trust me, trust me. And in that beautiful creation, there was a tree. And the tree is called the knowledge of good and evil because God gave human beings the free will. And inside this tree is darkness. God says, folks, I'm so good, just trust me. You don't know what's good or bad for yourselves. Did you agree with that? So trust me, trust me. You think you know what's good for you. Remember the girl you dated in high school, okay? You think you know what's good for you, okay? Right? But you don't know. And you may think what's bad for you, but you don't really know. So just trust me, don't eat. You can have anything you want, anything you want in creation, but don't eat the fruit of this tree that gives you the right to choose what's good or bad for yourselves. Trust me, because I know better than you know what's good or bad for yourselves. But in the garden, this came along. Snake. And said this. God's not reliable. He's not reliable. He's not. God's not reliable. Don't trust him. You know better what you need. You know better what you need. God doesn't know what you need. How can God know what you need? You know what you need. Don't believe him. Don't believe him. Go ahead. You know. Take, go ahead. You, you choose for yourself what's good. And so Adam and Eve took a bite of the fruit of the apple, and they began. Then, the, the, then all the garden changed. That's called what they call the fall, and everything hit the fan. Now there's death. Now there's murder. Now there's hatred. Now there's sickness. Now there's weeds. Now there's mosquitoes. Now there's Oakland Raider fans, okay? <laughs> the world is bad, bad. It's bad because now God unleashes his goodness and lets people have their free will and what people choose is never good for themselves. And life now, and get this, from now on, from after the second chapter, the first chapter, I'll do some kinesthetic stuff. The first chapter is creation. Got that? Then comes the fall. Creation and then the fall. And after that, life becomes, from now on, after the fall of Adam, life becomes brutiful. You with me? You can't, using Scott Mead's words, you can't bifurcate beautiful and brutal. They're two sides of the same coin. Are you all with me today? If you have a good marriage and people say, wow, that's a good marriage, I guarantee you went through some brutal chapters in your marriage. If you have a good career and you're making money, I bet there's times when it was brutal. And if life is brutal, there's times that you don't just succumb to the brutality of life because amidst that brutality, God will give you some beautiful things too. Are you all with me? From now on, life is brutal. It's hard and it's beautiful all at the same time. And it got really, really, really bad. So the next picture is this. God says, you know what? It was so bad, Cain killed Abel. Cain killed his brother. Let's put the next picture up there, okay? Cain killed Abel. Things got started bad. And the Bible says this, that everything on man's mind was evil. And so God says, I can't let, world, I can't let the world keep doing that, okay? So God creates. He goes, I need somebody. To, oh, that's not a good boat, Okay, all right. Okay, I need, I need somebody to help. The world's going to go, the world's going under. The world's going I need somebody who will trust me in the midst of all this chaos. Somebody's got to trust me. Who's going to, and he found a guy named Noah. What's his name? Noah. Noah, trust me. Noah says, I trust you. And God says, here's what I'm going to do. In the midst of all this bad stuff, trust me. Trust me. I will deliver you. And he makes Noah become a preacher of righteousness, which basically means a preacher of trust me. Noah's going over, trust God. The world's crazy, but trust God. He's good. Trust God. He's good. Trust. God's going to judge this evil, but if you trust him, he'll get us out of it. Trust God. Trust God. And he found eight people. That's it. 
in the middle of the desert. God says, I'm going to bring rain. I'm going to bring rain to, 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 to squelch out all the evil. Rain didn't exist in that time. It was a word that didn't exist. It was like God's going to bring uh, chamash. No word. And we go, what's chamash? Chamash is rain. Like, That's weird. And Noah's building this huge boat in the middle of the desert. And people say, dude, you've lost your mind. You're crazy. This is the desert. Yeah, but chamash is coming. What's chamash? Water. It's never done that before. I know, but just trust God. Just trust him. Just trust him. Just trust him. He found eight people. And all of a sudden, rain came down. Rain came down and flooded the entire world for 40 days, 40 nights. Rain came down and flooded the world. And God said, I need to start all over with people who will trust me. Well, all the water recedes, and God says this, I rebuilt the world. I've, I've made it all new. So here's what I want you to do. Spread out, spread out, and enjoy the beauty of God's creation. Trust me, I could take care of you. But after people saw the flood, they couldn't trust God. And so they all stayed together, and they built this tower, very, very common in ancient world called a ziggurat, okay? And the people says, we're not moving. We're going to stay together because God can't be trusted. Have you ever let fear stop you from doing something you wanted to do? And God says, trust me. And the people say, no, we're sticking together. We're sticking together. And God says, no, the world is for you. Go, trust me, and you can be blessed if you move out. They wouldn't move out. They stayed together. And God says, no, don't rely on each other. Trust me. Trust me. And the people say, no, we're not going to trust you. And so God said, I have to confuse their language. And so this is where languages came in. And God disturbed, took their languages and said, people, you can't stay together. You have to trust me. And that's what we call the Tower of Babel. Languages came in and the people had to separate according to their tongues to be understood. And God said, if you just trusted me, we wouldn't have to have all that stuff. Okay? So that's the Tower of Babel. Got it? Say, I got it. How you doing, Lukey? How's your aerobic system? Good? Okay. All right. Now God's got a problem. The world people aren't trusting him. And so God needs to establish a beachhead. So he's puzzled. So here's what God does when he's puzzled. puzzled. He does this. Do this. Huh. I need to establish a beachhead. I need a beachhead. I need a beachhead. I need to find someone who will trust me, and I'll work through him. And so God's working all over the world to find somebody who can trust him. This is a beard, because when you do this, you get a beard. And he found a guy named Abram. And God says, Abraham, trust me. Trust me. If you trust me through you, through you, all the world will be blessed. Just trust me. You're going to have a kid. Abraham says, I can't have a kid. I'm an old man. So here's what I'm going to do. I got a servant. He's helping me. His name's Eliezer. He'll be the one you use. God says, no, trust me. Trust me. Well, Abraham's getting old. He's 100 years old. His wife is 90. They're like over the hill plus, okay? And, 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 and his wife says, I can't have a kid. So you go, you go have a relationship with your servant with your concubine and have a kid and he does and this person's name is Hagar and God says that's not the person trust me trust me Abraham goes I'm a hundred years old look at her she's 90 she's not in her prime God says trust me and so he has relations with Sarah and they have a baby at 190 and they're laughing. Ha <laughs> this is hilarious. The old goat produced the kid. It's unbelievable. They're laughing. And the kid's name is Laughter. In Hebrew, it's translated Isaac. Isaac. And Abraham's the only guy who goes to Walmart and gets the pens and pampers at the same time. Okay, all right? Okay, it's unbelievable. 100 years old. And God says, trust me. Now he says this. Through you, Abraham. Through you, Abraham. All the world will be blessed. Are y'all with me? Short term, that's Isaac. Long term, who is it? Jesus. Are y'all with me? Okay. So Isaac, here at Lukey, Isaac has two kids, Jacob and Esau. They're twins. They come out fighting. These kids came out of the womb fighting. Okay. 
And one kid named Jacob. This is a wrestling outfit. It's not very good. Okay, all right, I'm bad. Okay, Jacob, Jacob, Isaac has 12 kids. I mean, no, Isaac has Jacob and Esau, okay? Jacob will have 12 kids. Jacob's name means liar. Means liar. He's a deceiver his entire life. We'll just put an L there for liar. He lied to his mom. He lied to his dad. He lied to his uncle. He lied to his wife. He stole the birthright from his son. Everywhere Jacob went, he lied. Are you all with me? Because he's a hyper-controlling dude. He wanted to control things. God says, trust me, Jacob. I could use you if you just trust me. And he says, I can't trust you. I know what's best. And he became a liar and a deceiver and a manipulator and a controller. And one night when he's all alone, God wanted to use Jacob. And so God met him. And God wrestled with them. And God pinned them down. Finally, Jacob met a force that was bigger than himself. He goes, ah, I give up. He goes, what's your name? Back then, your name meant your character. What's your name? He says, my name is Jacob. I'm a liar. I'm a deceiver. I'm a cheater. And he goes, that's right. But you wrestled with God. You didn't give up. You stayed with me. You fought. So I'm going to change your name from Jacob, liar, to Israel which means one who's wrestled with God and is prevailing. Are you all with me? Anybody here wrestling with God today? Anybody here, huh? I want to tell you, that's a great place to be to wrestle with God. There's things in my life aren't clear, and I'm wrestling with God. And God, why is this? Why? I'm wrestling with God. And God says, you keep wrestling. Don't give up. Keep trusting me. Even when you don't see results, you keep trusting me. You keep trusting me. And Jacob says, I'm going to trust you. And God changed his name. You're not going to be a deceiver anymore. You're going to be one who prevails because you're trusting God. Are you all with me? Okay. Jacob would have how many kids? 12 kids. Here you go, Luke. Jacob would have 12 kids. One of his kids' names was uh, Joseph. Oh, I can't do this either. That's why someone's got to draw next week. Uh, That's a coat. Okay. All right. And that's a, don't laugh at me. Okay. I'm insecure about this anyway. Okay. And, and, And that's a coat with many colors. And one of Jacob's kids was Joseph. And God said to Joseph when he was a young kid, hey, Joseph, trust me, I'm going to do something great for you. For, 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 something great's going to happen through you. Just trust me. And Jacob's, his dad believed him, so he gave him a coat, coat of many colors. And he goes, look at me, God's going to use me. God's going to use me. And the brothers got jealous. And they, and they took Joseph, they kind of kidnapped him, and sold him into slavery, betrayed him. You ever been betrayed? And in that betrayal, God says, trust me, Joseph, trust me. He gets sold on the auction block in Egypt. He gets, he gets bought by the, governor's, by the governor to be a servant in the governor's palace. And the governor's wife charges him falsely with rape. And he gets thrown into prison. He's like, God, I thought I was supposed to do something good. And he says, just trust me, trust me. Some of you right now, the circumstances in your life aren't very good. And God is saying, trust me, trust me, trust me. And so Joseph becomes an amazing interpreter of dreams. It's the gift that God gave him. And through interpreting Pharaoh's dream, the president of Egypt had a dream that no one could interpret. Joseph interpreted it, and he says, there's going to be a big famine. You're going to have seven years of blessing and seven years of unbelievable, stark famine. And and, and it was true. And so the Pharaoh elevated Joseph to manage the whole thing. Joseph becomes like the second most powerful man in the world. And he would save 20% of the blessing when they were in a period of prosperity. So when it, was a period of, when it was a period of famine, they were able to feed the population. And Joseph's whole family comes down because they need food. And Joseph forgives the brothers that sold him into slavery. And Joseph becomes catapulted to the second highest position in the world and literally through his astute management saves the world because he trusted God. Even in, the, even in the prison, even when his brothers betrayed him, hard circumstances, he continued to trust God through it all. And now his whole family's in Egypt. They're all living in Egypt because of Joseph's unbelievable trust in God, and God blessed him. Well, while they're in Egypt, the Jews keep growing, they keep growing, they keep growing. The Egypt, Egyptians are afraid. They're afraid of them. And so they make them, this is straw. Little straw. They enslaved all the Jews and said, now your job is to make bricks for our building campaigns. And all the Jews became slaves. And they said, God, I thought you were going to use us. We're Abraham's children. You said through us the whole world will be blessed. And God says, trust me, trust me, 
trust me. And so in, I can't do this. Lukey last night says, Dad, this is your worst drawing of all the fire. So um, that's the fire, okay? Uh, there's, a fire, there's a fire in the middle of the desert, and there's this guy named Moses walking through. Moses is exiled from the Jewish people because he's a murderer. And he sees a fire. He sees a fire. But nothing's being consumed. And Moses goes, this is a different fire. This is something that's different about this fire. So he goes to the fire, and God meets him. God's going to raise up a deliverer, a murderer. If there's anyone here who says God can't use you, strike the thought. God's going to use his deliverer to be Moses, a murderer. That's short term. Long term, her deliverer is going to be, y'all with me? Moses goes, who are you? And God gives his name. My name is Yahweh, which in Hebrew means I am who I am which means this, that's God's name. God's name is I am, which means whatever you need, he is. God says, whatever you need today, I'm it. And he raises up the deliverer. The short-term deliverer is Moses, who goes back to where his people are in bondage and delivers them to freedom. The long-term deliverer is Jesus, who will get us out of the plight of this world and take us to the promised land. Are you all with me? Okay, And so Moses goes back to Pharaoh. Moses goes back after he sees the burning bush. The murderer goes back to Egypt. And he says, hey, Pharaoh, here's what I want you to do. God's going to use my people, and he's not going to use us in Egypt. So Moses says, let my people go. We got to get out of here. We need to get out of here. God's going to take us to a special place. And Pharaoh says, no way. They're in Egypt. Egypt has a lot of gods. And so God brings nine plagues. All nine plagues are the Egyptian gods that God shows he's more powerful. One of the Egyptian gods was frogs. God says, you like frogs? Here, have a lot of them. (laughs) Enough! Enough! You like lice? Here, have a lot of them. No! No! How about grasshoppers? You like them? Here's a lot. And every of the nine plagues, God overwhelmed them with the Egyptian gods. He says, we don't want that. And then the 10th plague, God says this. Now you have to do something. If you want to be special, follow me. Here's what I want you to do. I want you tonight, take a lamb. Take that lamb and kill it. And take its blood and put it on top of your door. And on the sides, like a cross. Put it over your house. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew or an Egyptian, an Italian, a Hungarian, a Polak, or a Raider fan. It doesn't matter. If you have the blood of the lamb on you, I will pass over you, and I'll have you be part of the group of people that I'm going to bless. Are you all with me? And when Pharaoh got up and saw all the firstborn that were dead, who people who didn't have their blood, he told Moses, get out of here. Go. Get out. Get out. And Moses would take his people into the wilderness, form the Ten Commandments. He gets them from God and forms a community that becomes the beachhead, the country Israel, that God is going to use to bring a light to the whole world. Are you all with me today? Trust me, Moses, trust me. That's the first two books of the Bible. Genesis, which means beginning. Exodus, which means exit. Let's get out of here. One more thing before we get out of here, okay? God is saying this, trust me. If you trust me, you could move me from being viable to reliable. And you will see when you rely on me that my peace and my presence in your life will be undeniable. Two things. Two things. Okay? Oh, Lukey, you didn't get that one up here. Come on, bud. You got to be aggressive. Sometimes dad forgets. I'm getting old, buddy. Okay? Got to help, gotta help the old man out sometimes. Okay? Just be aggressive, bud. Okay, all right? That's just nine things. Takes you for the first two chapters. Okay? Creation. Creation. Then the fall. Then the flood. Then the scattering of the nations. He's looking for a beachhead. He gets Abraham. Through Abraham, he wrestles with Jacob, the strong man, and develops the 12 tribes of Israel. Then comes Joseph with the technicolor dream code. Are you all with me? He says, you just blessed me. Takes him into Egypt through the fire and through the exit. God establishes his people. And all along he's saying, trust me, trust me, trust me. Now watch this. One of the 12 kids that Jacob had 
one of the 12, was a guy named Judah. A kid named Judah. And God says this, watch that boy, watch that boy Judah, because I, the world seems crazy and chaotic and messy and no one's in control, but out of Judah is going to come the lion who's going to be in control of the world, the lion of Judah. You with me? Short term, that was King David. Long term, the lion of Judah, who will reign this world someday with great power and great peace and great justice. Are y'all with me? That's the lion of Judah. And then when Moses was the deliverer, he says, Moses, take the lamb. Let the band come. Come on up, band. Okay? He says, why don't you come? Bring the lamb. And through the softness and the blood of the lamb, I will forgive and redeem and empower my people. Are y'all with me? Right there in the first two chapters, first two books of the Bible, God says this. Watch out for the lion. Watch out for the lamb. The lion who reigns the world and the lamb who redeems and forgives and empowers his people. Trust me. When your life is out of control, trust me. There's a lion that's going to take over. And when your world seems so dirty and filthy and you've disqualified yourself, God says, trust me. There's a lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God, the hope of the world. Let's all stand together. Let's all stand together. Father, thank you. You're an amazing God. Some of us here need your power. Some of us here need your forgiveness. Help us trust you today. Whatever we're wrestling with in our life, help us trust you because you're good. And as we trust you, move our hearts. Move our hearts so that we know that you're more than a God who's just viable, that you're a God who's reliable, the lion and the lamb. May we trust you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray.